Hi guys, right now I'm going to be demonstrating the basic venipuncture using straight needle or the evacuated method. Uh, so first thing that you would want to do, even before uh, greeting your patient, is one, check the requisition form for whatever tests are going to be needed, and two, always sanitize your hands. Already did that, so we're going to assume that I have a requisition form with me that's going to have the patient's first name, last name, date of birth, and any pertinent information. First thing I want to do to make sure that I have the right patient is get their name and date of birth, introduce myself. Hello sir, I'm Alex, I'm one of the phlebotomists here. May I please get your name and date of birth for your safety? Denver, January 1st, 1985. Okay, so Denver, just like uh, Teller from Penn and Teller, only one first name, no last name, that is fine. Uh, name and date of birth checks out. Usually I don't recommend sitting, but just because of video angle and everything else, I am going to be sitting to do the procedure. Uh, if you notice, my phlebotomy tray, all out of order right now, disorganized. Why? Because it's going to vary from person to person. For me, I like having everything nice and organized, pretty much the way that I am going to need it, nice and set up. If you see, it's already starting to look better, right? First thing we're going to need to do after we get that, uh, he already knows what's going on, you know, blood work being done. At any point in time, he can refuse this, uh, and this goes for now and out there. If he does refuse, if your patient refuses, just try to figure out why. We're going to apply the tourniquet, nice and tight, and we're going to put a little loop. We are not putting it all the way through. If you notice, there's that nice loop and I can actually make it tighter. We're going to locate the vein. It's going to be right there. Can easily feel it, easily palpate it. Reason we do that loop, so we can easily remove it. Tourniquet should not be left on for longer than a minute for two reasons. One, it can cause nerve damage. Two, it could cause hemoconcentration, which would cause uh, erroneous results. We're going to put our gloves on. The whole reason for the gloves is to not just protect ourselves, but to protect our patient as well. We're going to clean the site. And if you notice, I have not set up any of the equipment just yet, and there is a reason for that. We already located the vein, we know where it's at. To use one alcohol wipe, we're going to start at the center and circle out. Never going back in. Whole reason behind that is as we circle out, we are getting the bacteria out. If I were to have circled out and then scrubbed back and forth, I would be getting dirt and bacteria back onto the site. As it's drying, I'm going to take one piece of gauze and just like this, it'll bleed through, but I'm going to go one, two, nice and tight. If you look, it's gotten smaller, thicker. It's going to make things easier as far as preventing any blood going through his nice white shirt. Set up the needle. Have your vacutainer here, sheathed in, Screw right in. Make sure that the safety device is up. I'm going to put the needle back down. We're going to reapply the tourniquet nice and tight. With our gloves on. I can visualize the vein. His vein's curving a little bit this way, no big deal. I'm just going to curve my body. Why? So I can go straight in. 
I like to have the tube already ready. Don't stick it all the way in as you will lose vacuum. Anchor the vein, stick the needle in, insert the tube, remove the tourniquet, move the tube, grab the gauze, and as soon as the needle comes out, safety cap. I didn't draw the full tube of blood because there is no point for in-classroom purposes. If we were out in the field, the tube would have naturally stopped filling, and then I would just invert gently eight to 10 times. Sir, would you like a Band-Aid? Sure. Okay, can you do me a favor and just hold pressure right there okay. while I get that Band-Aid for you? Now everyone thinks that the needle, putting in the needle, uh, is the hardest part of phlebotomy. That is a lie. The hardest part is the Band-Aid. I'm going to show you the little secret right now. So opening the Band-Aid's easy. And what everyone does, and I see this, you know, the most experienced and the least experienced, they go and remove the, the little